First of all, I'd like to thank you for choosing a new Honda E as your next new vehicle. In this video, we're going to go around the car, look at the technology and the features that the car has, and show you how you can set them up for yourself to get the most out of this brilliant car from day one and start enjoying the drive of this car. So please join me as we go into greater detail around the new Honda E. When it comes to unlocking and locking your Honda E, there are a couple of ways we can do it. I hate both of those. So on the remote, there's the usual unlock button, unlock. So if we press unlock, the door handles will pop out. We can open the door, obviously, get into our car, drive it. Locking the car, we shut it, press the lock button, and the door handles will pop into the car, or locked. Now, the other way of doing it is without actually using the key fob at all. So now I'm going to approach the car, and as soon as I get into the detection zone between the key and the car, the door handles will pop open. Now, when I approach the car, there's a little sensor underneath, but just give it a moment and it will allow me to get into the car. So when it comes to locking the door using the keyless system, there are three little ridges on top of the door handle. All I need to do is apply a little bit of uh, pressure onto the top of those and the car will recognize this and it will lock the door for me. Now, one other thing to note on your key is that it has a battery inside it for the remote. If that has failed, the battery's gone flat, you can still get into your car. So there's a little release catch on the back of the, uh, the key fob, which shows you there's a little blade inside. What you would do is then go to the, the door handle, manually pull it open, and you can actually pop the key into the key barrel that's hidden discreetly behind the handle. Then when you get in, remember the battery in this is no longer any good, but you can still drive the car. So all you would do, hold the key fob over the power button. That power button will energize this key fob so it recognizes it's your key and will allow you, once you follow the instructions on the, uh, the dashboard, will allow you to carry on driving to your Honda dealer to get a new battery fitted in that key fob. So to get going, it really is very, very simple. Put on the, uh, the foot brake, press the power button, and you're ready to go once you've selected drive. So like a, an automatic transmission, we have a, a series of buttons down here. P is for park, R for reverse. You would pull this back so you can't catch it by mistake. Then you've got your neutral, and of course, we would want to select D for drive. Now what we would do is literally use our throttle to drive us forwards. It's uh, an automatic style. Um, however, we have paddles on the, uh, the steering wheel here. This is not for gear changing because we, we don't do that on this car. This is about how much regenerative braking we want. So we can use the plus or minus paddles to actually give us more or less uh, regenerative braking when we actually come off the throttle. Um, below the park, uh, reverse, neutral and drive buttons, we also have our electronic parking brake. So because I've got my um, seat belt on, as soon as I drive away, that will automatically release. Um, and I have brake hold below there as well. Now, brake hold literally holds the brakes on for you. So if I've come to a complete stop by using my brakes and brake hold has been selected, it will literally hold me there until I choose to go backwards or forwards. Um, so that means on any journey, I don't need to be putting a parking brake on, uh, traffic islands or things like that. The car will actually do it for me and hold that braking pressure on as though I was doing with my foot brake. Really fantastic feature. You can select that or you don't need to select that. That is entirely your choice. Just below the, the D button for drive, we have our button for single pedal control. So if I select this, I need to have my seatbelt on to do this and the, the parking brake to be applied. Um, what it will allow us to do is, if we want to, purely drive the car just using the accelerator. Now, if we didn't have this, you could accelerate, and as you come off the accelerator, the car would continue to go, but it would just slow down because you have no more momentum. With single pedal control, as you come off the accelerator, it will actually apply braking, regenerative braking, so the energy is stored back into the battery. But if you wanted to, you could completely drive the car just using the accelerator. Don't worry, if you want to, you can still use the brake even in this mode, entirely up to you. And then just a little bit further down, we have the drive mode. So if you push it forwards, 
we actually get it into sport mode, so it sharpens the throttle response. And if we pop it back, it will go into standard mode. So again, you have the choice of how the throttle is going to respond and how it's going to speed you up. So in the centre of the dash, we have the button for our hazard warning lights. So that's just a simple press there. Moving slightly over, we have our indicators and literally you can just push it once and it will give you three flashes on the indicators. If you want them on for a, a longer duration, just click them one stage further. So on the right hand side, we have the stalk for the wipers. So just one push up will give it a mist. Just if you do want one wipe of the screen. Next position down is for auto. So in that position, it will actually be using the rain sensor on the windscreen to detect the raindrops. And then we can adjust the sensitivity plus or minus with the little thumb wheel uh, just showing you there. If you want it in a fixed uh, speed, we've got low and we've got high, which would just be the next two positions uh, down. Should we want to clean the windscreen, we just pull that towards us and it will obviously uh, squirt the, uh, the windscreen with our washer fluid and wipe the windscreen as well. And just on the end, we have the ability to use the, uh, the wiper for the rear screen. And again, we can do intermittent there or a fixed on position. And again, one more rotation would use the, uh, the washer fluid to actually clean that rear screen for us as well. The stalk on the left hand side is responsible for controlling our headlights. Now, the default position is auto, so it will use the, uh, the light sensor on the front screen to determine whether they need to be on or not. Now, this is over and above the daytime running lights, which are standard on this car as well. But if you wanted to force them into dip beam, you'd literally go through side lights and onto dip beam. Also on this stalk, we have the ability to put our front and rear fog lights on at the simple twist of the, uh, the, the dial there, and we can turn those both off as well. Should we need to flash somebody just to let them know where uh, our presence is, is about, we can give it a little flash there and that will let people know we're here. On the subject of headlights, we can actually choose how long or if at all we want the headlights to be on after we close the driver's door. So all we do, we go into all apps and we'll look for vehicle settings. So we scroll to the bottom of the menu there, tap on our vehicle settings and one of the icons is lighting setup. So in there, it gives us the auto um, headlight off timer. So we tap on that and it looks like you have three choices, 60, 30 and 15 seconds. Actually, there is one more. So if you didn't want the headlights to remain on after you've closed the door, you could select zero, but I'm quite happy with 15. That's a nice amount of time. What I'm going to do here is just go back one stage and I'm going to integrate my headlights and wipers. So this is a really nice feature. So if your wipers are on, the car will actually put your headlights on. So if you've got reduced visibility because of the rain, it will actually put on your dipped beam for you. So that's on, I'm happy with that. And I can go back to the, uh, the previous menus. On the right hand side, we've got operations for adjusting the view for the side camera mirror system and operation of the electric windows. So just like a traditional system with a car that has uh, electrically operated uh, door mirrors, you'd slide it to the right hand side or to the left hand side to adjust them. In this instance, with our side camera mirror system, you're not adjusting the angle of the camera, just the view that you get within it. So if you imagine your view is a sheet of A3 paper, what you're doing is moving a sheet of A4 paper within that to get the view that you actually want. And that's operated by the little joypad just below it where we can go left, right, up or down to get the perfect view for you. Below that, we have the ability to lock the doors, uh, just literally at the uh, rocker switch, which to the right will lock the doors and to the left will unlock the doors for us. And then below that, we have the, um, the safety button. So when we press this and we get an amber light inside it, it will actually indicate for us that only the driver can operate the, uh, the electric windows. So this will eliminate if you've got passengers in the, the front seat or the rear seat operating those windows if you don't want them to. Of course, we can turn that off now and all four of the windows are one touch. So literally, we can push them all the way down and send those down or of course, all the way back up. If you only wanted it part the way, you'll feel a tiny little bit of resistance and you can stop at any point you wish. To keep you at the exactly the right temperature, our buttons along here will um, pop your heated seats on for you, gives you the nice indication on the, the screen. We can pop those down. We've got three stages there. 
And then moving across, we have the ability to turn the system uh, on and off for the, uh, for the blower. That will show us up there as well. Um, at the moment, the air conditioning is off. If we wanted to turn air conditioning on, it will give us that confirmation there as well. Should we want to um, recirculate the air, we just pop that little button on there and that will keep the, the air that's inside the cabin recirculating. Um, then we can change the different modes for where the air is going to flow from. And again, it gives us confirmation, not only on the small display here, but the really large display up top as well, whether it's on our face and feet, or whether it's just on our feet, or wherever it may be. Then we have a couple of buttons for the, the front um, screen, demister, and actually for the rear screen. And again, it gives us lovely icons on there, just to literally highlight what it's doing for us at any point in time. And of course, we have our temperature. If we want the car to just look after everything for us and we say, right, I want 21 degrees, do it for me. That's the easiest thing. Just press it on auto and it will figure out what uh, vents it needs to do for you and keep you at that ideal temperature. Now, not only have we got that, but we have a heated uh, steering wheel on the advanced model. So you can just pop that on as well. Now, to take it one step further, I'm just going to turn that off for a moment we can actually schedule the Honda E to get the car to the temperature you want even before you get into it. So on the screen, all we do, we pick our EV menu and this will give us a few options. The ones we want to focus on here are the preconditioning climate schedule and also the climate operation. So if we go into the schedule, we have various uh, settings here and if we just pick one, so setting one, um, what we put in here is our departure time. So let's say we want to set that for um, five o'clock of an evening. That's when we're, we're leaving work. So we click OK there and we're going to select Monday through Friday. Of course, we're going to select it to be on now and we're going to save that. That saves it in, that's our new schedule. And you can see it on the calendar over there for us. Now, if we go back a stage, we can actually tell it in the operation what we actually want it to do. So our temperature adjustment, normal, that'll be in the sort of the low 20s for you. Depending on the climate, you might want it to be a little warmer than low 20s or a little cooler in the car than low 20s. I'm quite happy with low 20s, so normal's perfect. The operating time how long do we want it to precondition for? Now remember, if your car is actually plugged in and charging at home, when you get to the car, it will still be at 100% charge because you're using electricity from home to actually precondition the temperature of your car. I'm gonna set that for 10 minutes. I don't think it needs to be more than that. I'm gonna save that. Now, what we have on the, um, the advanced model is the defroster synchronization. So this is based on the external temperature. If it's cool, uh, what it will do, it will actually apply heat to the front windscreen. So when we get in, it's defrosted the ice or the snow off the windscreen. So not only is it warm and comfortable in the car, it's really nice and safe to drive off as well because we've got really good, clear visibility. When we're done, we just click on there. That's all back and we're saved. So when it comes to, to charging the, uh, the Honda E, there are a number of ways of opening the charging lid. Now, because this car is unlocked, we can press the button at the front and that will pop up. Now, with the car, you'll get two charging leads. One will have a three pin plug at the, uh, the end that you plug in at home. That is your slow charger and it will have an end like this that plugs very simply into the car. So open up that top flap there, plug it in, and you'll see that the charging light at the top goes from white to pulsing blue. Now, the other lead that you'll get is what we call a type two connector. So it will be exactly the same on this end because it plugs into your car. And on the other end is a very similar connector. This could plug into your wall box at home. It could plug into the charging station at a supermarket or motorway services. And depending on the amount of current that it will actually uh, take through there, depends how many hours it will take to charge your car up. Now, if you want a rapid charge, so we'll just take this out for a moment and taking it out is really simple. There's a button in the top right hand corner, press that, wait for a moment. There we go, we get a little click. We can take that out. I'll just pop it down here for a moment. 
Uh, so when you were doing the DC charging, this rapid charge that can do up to an 80% charge in around about 30 minutes, you open up this second flap just underneath. So the connector you're going to plug into your car looks very similar at the top, but it has like an oval uh, a connector underneath that as well. So you're now using the charger, probably a motorway service, it's somewhere where uh, you're going to be getting that kind of charger, plug it in, and in about 30 minutes, providing the conditions are uh, suitable, you'll be good to go again for 80% of that battery range. So when you're finished, pop those uh, flaps over, push the, uh, the charging lid down, and you're good to go again. So for the items under the bonnet, we clearly need to open the bonnet. So first of all, get into the car. Open the bonnet. And the latch at the center is slightly offset. So we just pop into here, slide it a little bit to the right. And now we have gas struts. So that takes care of uh, leaving the bonnet up for us. And the items that you need to, to take a look at Screen wash with the blue cap on there, so obviously we'll need to make sure that's topped up. Um, things that we'll need periodic uh, checking as well, things like brake fluid and coolant. Now there are three um, little tanks here, just make sure they're uh, all nicely topped up uh, to the maximum, not above, and it's the same coolant for, for all of those. So at the back of the car, you'll see the, the orange insulation. That's where the high voltage is coming to actually power the vehicle. So the only things that we need to, to look at and concern ourselves with are things like the screen wash, which has got the blue cap, and on top of the brake fluid, we have the yellow one. Those are the things to make sure we keep an eye on, just to make sure they're at the right levels. We do have a 12 volt battery at the front, but when we charge up our car through the, uh, the normal port at the front, it will take care of charging that. If for any reason you don't plan on using your car for a little while, there is a little sticker here, and it does suggest that we should be charging our car for at least once in a three month period. So again, just make sure that is fully charged if you do intend to not use the car for a short period of time. When it comes to closing the, uh, the bonnet, because we have two catches either side of centre, it makes sense that as we close it, just use a couple of fingers there, just to put equal pressure on to close the bonnet nice and level. And remember, your new Honda e has a service schedule of 12 months or 12 and a half thousand miles, whichever comes soonest. So when that approaches, again, please contact your dealer so we can book you in for a service. Also, your new Honda e has deflation warning system. What that is, it's a way that the car can monitor the pressures inside your tires. So this can actually notify you if the pressures have gone up or gone down in relationship to each other. So this could be, you know, going from uh, warm days, colder nights, those kind of things, where the, the air temperature can change the pressure inside the car. So no need to be alarmed. I'll show you how to reset that in a moment. But first of all, do make sure that the pressures on your car are correct, because clearly it may be a puncture and you may need to get a new tire. However, if you've checked that everything's okay and it's just a temperature fluctuation, all you need to do is go inside and I'll show you how to do that. So simple as, we go from our home screen here, we select all apps, and that will bring us up a menu. We scroll to the bottom of that, and you will find vehicle settings. In vehicle settings, we have deflation warning system. We tap on that, and we have calibrate. And what calibrate will do, it will reset it, so it's now learning the new rotational speed of all your wheels and tires. So that is you good to go once you've checked that the pressures are correct in your tires. So for adjusting the seat, we have a couple of controls down by my right hand side. So we can lower the seat just by pumping down and we can pump up obviously to get the exactly the right position. Then just behind that, we have another lever so we can actually uh, get the, the incline or the recline of the seat correct for us as well. So once you've uh, set the seat that's nice and comfortable for you, next you want to do the steering wheel. So just down here, we have the lever and we can actually push it in, up, down and back. So for me, with my shoulders uh, in the, the back of the seat, I just want to be round about there. That's nice and comfortable for me, which means I've got a, a good ability to, uh, to steer nice and safely. To adjust the head restraint for maximum safety, first of all, we've got our, our seating position correct. Now we, uh, we just need to raise this or lower it 
whichever the case may be, because it needs to touch the sort of the bulbous part at the back of our head, but not constantly. So it's not interfering with me here, but I've got quite a gap. I can actually increase that by ratcheting and I can drive along, but should there be uh, any kind of impact, then the restraint is doing its job for me. Now, if I was getting in as a second driver, and this was too far forwards, to release that back, there's a button on the side, we just press that, it will release it, and just at the bottom of the uh, stalk there, we can lower it down and reset it for ourselves again. To adjust the height of the seatbelt, we have an adjuster on the, the B pillar. So what you want is it to be not coming down over your shoulder, but not too high up. So a nice sort of sweep over there. So all I do, I will just get the, the pull it out, we can, adjust it and for me it's just a couple of notches up just so it's perfect on my shoulder nice and comfortable but more importantly really safe at a glance we can tell if our parking sensors are on or not at the moment we have the little green uh, p symbol there for, for parking sensors and we can see they're on if we want to turn them off it's really simple we go into safety configuration and then that will bring us up various icons that we can tailor to your own liking. In this instance, we want to turn off parking sensor, so we tap the P sign there. That goes greyed out, and we'll notice that on our dash meter in front of us, uh, that has now gone. So we know that the parking sensors are no longer on. If we want to turn them back on, it's simply the reverse. The car has loads of storage compartments, so we have a place for our mobile phone at the front, uh, we have cup holders in the centre, and of course we have our glove box, just literally down there in front of the passenger's knees. And of course, as you'd expect, the horn is in the centre of the steering wheel. There are a couple of uh, user-selectable features on Honda Sensing. So we have intelligent adaptive cruise control. Now to operate that, all we would do is press the, the button next to the cancel, um, and then we can scroll through using the button with LIM on it. Now LIM is for limit, so we have three functions within this. We have a speed limiter, so we can set the limit that we want to not accelerate past just by pressing the set button, and then you can adjust it plus and minus for the, the appropriate speed. If you press the LIM button once more, you get like a traffic sign in front of the LIM button. This is intelligent speed limiter. So this uses the information that the camera's seen at the top for a speed sign of maybe 60 miles an hour, and it would limit your speed to not accelerate past 60. The final one though, is like a, the next generation of cruise control. So this is intelligent adaptive cruise control. So you can get to the, the speed you want to get to and set it, or if, you could, if you're on a motorway and you couldn't get to say 70 miles an hour, it would be 50, you can set it, but then you can actually press the, the plus button to take you up to 70. And then of course, when traffic in front clears, you will get up to your um, 70 miles an hour. Now, towards the bottom left corner of this sort of paddle here, we can adjust how far away from the vehicle in front we want to be. Now we measure that in time because time grows obviously the faster you go. Uh, and you can just do, we've got four settings there and that can be exactly what you want it to be within the parameters. So if you want to be nearer or a little bit further away from the car in front. Then we have lane keeping assist system. This is another driver selectable feature. So when you're going above sort of 45 miles an hour or above, so it is a, uh, a motorway or a dual carriageway feature, we simply press this button here and you'll see the indications on the, uh, the screen there. They're looking for the painted white lines to try and keep you more central on the road and put in some of those tiny sort of inputs through the steering wheel that we don't realize we're doing. Now this is gonna help uh, reduce driver fatigue and uh, keep you safer on the road for longer and make it more comfortable while you're driving. So from a driver's point of view, we have lots of usable information straight in front of us. So let me talk you through that. So on the right hand side of the screen, we have the, uh, the parking brake symbol. Obviously we're stationary at the moment, so that's going to be illuminated. We have the power and charge indicator. So as we're driving, we'll be consuming power and the more uh, rapidly we accelerate, the more power we'll see coming up there. When we decelerate, we'll be charging the batteries up and we'll see that go green below it. Just at the bottom, we can see that our battery is 47% charged. And then because we're stationary, obviously we are zero miles an hour. At the top, we can see that the last traffic sign that we passed was a 70 mile an hour uh, speed sign. 
Just below that, we have the icon to tell us uh, some of our uh, extra sensing features like blind spot information there or active. In a moment, we'll go through how you can modify those. We can see our parking sensors are on. Uh, we can see our mileage for this car, obviously the, the temperature outside as well. We'll come to the home button in a moment because that's on the steering wheel. And we can see we've got a, a door and a boot open on this one. Uh, it's in park. The mode is normal, so we have two modes, normal and sport, which we change just down by the gear selection on our centre console. And then we have our ready to drive icon. So we have a picture of a green car that's ready to move once we've selected drive or reverse. Then all we need to do is accelerate. And the information icon, because we have in this instance uh, a door open. So in the center, by my, my left thumb, we actually have a home button, and this will change the icons on the left-hand side of my screen. So if we take you through those, we press the home button, and we can actually scroll through and see information, so it was telling us there was a door open. Um, if we scroll to the next one, we have fuel economy figures, so we can push on that, and it will give us uh, average fuel economy. We have trip A and trip B at the bottom, so we can just scroll between trip A and trip B. If we want to go uh, to the next one down, we will see that we have information on average miles per hour, how long this journey was, and again, our trip meters. Then, next one down is for audio. So this will tell us if we were playing the, the radio, whether it be DAB, an FM station, or our own choice of music. Then, as we go down, we have telephone. So we'll pair a phone shortly. That would take us into our hands-free system. Then we have navigation. So if we select this, it will tell us we have a compass that'll show us our direction. Of course, if we had navigation set for a destination in the car itself, that would give us our turn-by-turn -turn signals. Then we have our speed alarm. So this would just bong at us as we go over 30 or 50. These are not set at the moment, but we could if we wanted to. We have information on who's wearing their seatbelt. There's only me in the car at the moment, so I can see that's green for me. That's all good. We have information on our sensing features. So when we've selected that, we can actually roll up and we can select or deselect elements like lane departure warning. We can scroll down for blind spot information. And obviously I'm going to put these back on again because I want to be as safe as possible. So we just scroll back up and make sure we have a tick in the box for all of those. And then we go back to information, which is where we started. And it shows us that we do have a door open and we do have a boot open. So that's why we have the little amber eye there, just to notify us that something needs our attention before we start driving. Now, when it comes to our uh, infotainment system, just going to go through some of the features that can help you get on your way and make the most of this system. So right from the, uh, the start, we'll go to our all apps. So in here, we can see quite a large selection of items. If we start right at the top, we have things like AHA radio, which will allow us to listen to internet radio, providing we have a, a wireless connection, which of course we're going to through this system if we've opted for the Wi-Fi hotspot in the car. Uh, we've got our aquarium on here, Bluetooth audio, our clock, um, DAB menu, uh, EV menu. There are many, many things on here. So what you can do is tailor the sort of uh, hot buttons on the, the right hand side. So for the most frequently used ones that you want to, uh, to use. If there's something uh, like I, I do like to pop on the aquarium, if I want to press that, um, that'll just come up there for me once I've, uh, I've downloaded that. It's free, no problem there. Um, however, when it comes to normal driving, I've got my favorite features along here. So I've got my navigation, which will come onto one of the screens there for me. And this is because I've selected it over here. If my passenger had selected um, navigation, which they could do, it would be on their screen on the left-hand side. One of my favorite screens on here is the EV menu. So this will give us information about uh, whether the car's connected to a, a, a charge uh, point, what the state of uh, battery is, in this case 47%, but on this screen we also have something called the charge wait time schedule. This is where we can set times we don't want the car to charge. So for instance, if we wanted to go into uh, our time here, this is the start time, and we want it to go seven o'clock in the morning and end at 11 o'clock at night, or let's even say uh, 11.50. So we take that to 11.50. So we take that to 11.50 and we will OK that. 
So what the car is not going to do is charge in those times. So what it is going to do is from 11.51 until 6.59, the car will accept charge. And I'm going to set this for every day of the week. And I'm going to set that. There are two destinations here. We've got anywhere or home. So home is home that's set into your satellite navigation and anywhere is anywhere but that. Now, the reason I might want to do this, if I set this to on and then save it, is because I might have less expensive electricity between midnight and seven o'clock in the morning. So that, what that's going to do is minimize my cost on electricity and maximize the efficiency for me. So remember, if you want to cancel that at any point, you just go into it and you can literally just turn that off, but the settings will stay in there for you. Not a problem at all. So another great feature within this menu is the charge limit settings. So at the moment, we're away from our home destination as shown by the little uh, arrow there, and the car will, given enough time, charge up to 100% wherever we are. However, you might not want to do that. For instance, if you live at the top of a hill and your first journey is always going to be down that hill, why not set it to 95% charge? Because then as soon as you drive off your drive, you're going down a hill and you're getting free energy. It could be that you only want to go up to 85% when you're away from home, just to minimize your cost because you can get cheaper electricity at home. So the flexibility really is, is there for you. And if you make any changes, literally press save and that would be it saved for you. So if you want to use um, your smartphone connection, you can use Android Auto. You will need a wired connection to the car through its USB. Or if we press it here, I'm using an iPhone, so I have the ability to do this uh, wirelessly. So we'll connect a new device. I go into my Bluetooth and they will try to find each other. I tap Honda HFT on my phone. I will be given a code, they match up. So I'll click pair on there. I will allow it to um, get the connections on there. And you see right at the top there, we actually have my uh, information on there about the, the phone. Um, would I like to enable CarPlay? Yes, I would. So now in a moment, this should go um, from smartphone connection, which is quite generic. I click OK on my phone and that should, when they synchronize, turn to uh, the CarPlay logo because it will recognize that uh, we're in CarPlay. There we go. So now we can see that logo has changed to CarPlay. Uh, it's giving me my destination of where I am. If I go to my um, sort of home button there, we can see the icons that I can use nice and easily. And I could go straight into my phone rather than having to uh, do that extra connection. I can swipe across there and see the other icons that I can use, whether it be my Google Maps, my Waze Maps, whatever it might be. Um, I can scroll across there or back to my own navigation. So really, really usable. And of course, we don't have to have that, uh, that wired connection between my phone and the car. Now on here, somebody set it up so that we have the, the TA button. Now TA is traffic announcement. So this is if we're listening to um, an FM station, something like that. I might want something slightly different on here, but to, to get audio playing, I can just literally press my, uh, my audio button and we've now got volume, which I can turn on here. I could equally do that off the steering wheel, or I could go into my uh, music on here. So I could look at the, the music that I've got uh, stored through my, my Amazon Music, or it could be uh, using my phone as an, an iPod, and again, control the, the music up and down using the steering wheel controls. Now, if I go to all apps, what I might want to do is have um, my digital radio on there. So I can go to my different lists and I can uh, listen to whether it be Radio 1, Radio 2. Again, if we put a little bit of volume on there, we can, we can listen to the stations or we can actually scroll through left and right and select the ones that we actually want. So superb little system. Um, when it comes to, to tuning, the easiest thing to do will be just to scan through the different ones. And when it gets to the, the next station that it can uh, that it can pick up, it will actually uh, come through. So we have something different here. We'll stop on this one, and we can see that we're now listening to BBC Radio 4 Extra. If we wanted to store that as a preset, we'd just press and hold till we get the confirmation beep, 
and it adds it up as a preset in there for us. If you want to listen to things other than um, BBC stations, if you get your ensemble list, you can have uh, local stations, you can have national stations. Here we were just on the BBC station, so nice and easy to, uh, to choose from. Now we go back to our all apps. In there we have uh, general settings and if we wanted to we've got HDMI on there so anything that we have uh, connected into the HDMI would come up onto the screen. We have um, our owner's manual, digital owner's manual, it's quite a nice one to uh, have the ability to pop into that and see if we want to you know, check up on any information. We have, uh, have that there for us, no problems at all. We have our power flow chart. Very similar to our EV menu, but purely um, power flow on this one. Uh, system updates we can do, vehicle settings. If we've got a, the hotspot for our Wi-Fi setup, we can switch between those as well. So I'm just going to go to my CarPlay menu. Now I'm going to um, reach across and just pop the Bluetooth, the Honda App Center on for the passenger. So if we'd chosen on the driver's side to have navigation for uh, me and on the passenger side we had some information about the, uh, the status of the car, I can actually swap those just by pressing that button at the top and it'd swap them over. So now my passenger could actually uh, set a new destination in for me and then when they're done they could press their button and it would swap it over to the right hand side for me. So again another really usable, uh, easy, friendly uh, system on there. If you wanted to see the, the previous pages that you've um, loaded up, you can actually scroll, scroll through those, pick the one. If I wanted my owner's manual again, it would bring it up in front of me. So there's nice uh, information on there and really easy to access. And you can even personalize the icons on the right hand side as well. Opening the tailgate on your Honda e is really simple. Underneath the H badge is an electronic uh, switch which will allow the tailgate to rise up. Now we're in the booth, you'll probably notice there are a couple of bags. In those bags are your two charging cables. So if we look at this one first, just take it off its little uh, storage hook there, and in here is our Type 2 cable. So this is the one you're going to use most of the time, and it has on both ends similar kind of connectors. So one end would go into the car and the other would go into your charging uh, wall box, maybe at home or at the supermarket, so that you can charge it while you're uh, either asleep or doing your shopping. I'll just set this uh, to one side for the moment. On the other side is a slow charger. So this can be used uh, with a three pin plug. So a normal domestic socket. And again, of course, it will have the connector that will go into the car but this time we have a standard three pin plug to go into the home socket. Again, I'll just set this to one side. Now we're here, I'm just gonna remove the, uh, the shelf here for a moment, just to make it easier for you to uh, see inside. So I'll take that off. And underneath the carpet, this is where we'll find our temporary repair kit. So this is the, the kit you would use if you find yourself at the side of the road uh, with a puncture. But of course you do have roadside assistance as well, which would be my preference. Call them out, get them to help you on your way. But should you wish to, we have the uh, solution and also an air compressor to get you moving again. We pop the, uh, the carpet down. Before I fold the seats down, which is really easy, just literally this latch at the, uh, the top, just like to point out these top tether points. So if you are going to carry uh, child seats in the car, this is a really important part because when we get round to the, the side of the car, we'll see where the, the seat locks in at the base, but these top tether points are where a strap would come over the top of the seat through the legs of either of the uh, head restraints and lock onto one of these bars, improving safety and security of the child seat. But for the moment, we'll pop the head restraint down and because of how compact the car is, what I can do is actually fold the seat down right from the back of the car. But what we'll do, let's go around the other side so we can show you the seats from a different angle. 
as we mentioned earlier, I was going to point out for you the locations where the Isofix uh, child safety seat would fit to the car. So just underneath these plastic buttons, um, there's actually a structural part of the car that you would lock on the, um, the legs of the Isofix child safety seat to, in addition to the top tethers we saw on the back of the seat. And from a point of view of folding the seat down, dead simple to do from the side of the car as well. Just before we close the, uh, the rear door, we can actually show you the child lock switch here. So to activate them, you just push that down. And of course, you could have that on the passenger side rear door as well. Thank you for joining me in this video. So I'm sure we've discovered some new features and how to set them up and revisited some familiar features that we've experienced in the past. Should you have any questions about anything we've not covered for you in this video, please feel free to contact your local dealer where they can go through in greater detail those items. So congratulations on your new purchase and thank you very much. We look forward to keeping in touch with you.